the event that took place uh, just about two or three days before the general election. And uh, just for your interest, there is nothing called witch hunt in this whole thing. Nyakango comes from my neighboring county but in, uh, in Nyamira, and I come from Kisi. And I'm on record in the floor of the house having said that it's important for people who go for independent offices get to know their code of conduct and read it and understand it. One cannot use coercion as an excuse to hide, you know, their faces. And at no given time did the control of budget raise that issue until it came in the budget making process and the audit and in the National Assembly. Had she talked about it immediately even after elections and raised it without casting aspersions and, you know, blame games and stuff like that. It's at this point that Kenyans must know that let each person learn to carry their own cross. And we are going to start a process of removing Nyakango from office through legal means and legal channels, and that is the National Assembly. We've got to have people who are straight to run offices. I mean, really, 16 billion is not two shillings. Right now, members of parliament are suffering. They have not gotten national government uh, NGCDF for purposes of uh, bursaries. Kenyans are starving. You all know what is happening. Projects have stalled. You can imagine what 16 billion can do to this country. You know, you can imagine. Right now, the judiciary is also, you know, crawling. They cannot hire new judges, cases are, there are backlog cases, I mean, in court, and uh, prisons are full with people, who are, and matters are supposed to be fast tracked for purposes of completion and everything. I think with, we consider Nyakango as a whistleblower and a, vict and a victim and also a culprit in this whole thing. So she's got to choose which side she'll take. Whether to be a culprit, victim, of course, she's just a victim as a Kenyan, because she's also fallen prey of such a whole mess. And uh, she mentions all the names that were involved, and I don't think it's only, it's, it, I don't think it's only uh, the finance uh, minister, the former finance minister is involved. This whole thing is a scheme. Who are the owners of these companies that were paid? Where is maize, you know, that was paid for in terms of subsidy? Where is it? Well, you paid four billion, four days to elections. Where is that maze that you paid for? Which company? And who are the owners of those companies? Where are they located? Who are they? Who, I mean, besides the directions by Ukuru Atan, who else gave the directions? And by the way, that is the tip. It's just a tip. If the whole thing is given in black and white, you'll be surprised. That is what happened in about three days to elections. Whatever happened in a, within a month to election will shock Kenyans. And even immediately after elections, after the declaration of results, the drama that you saw, you know, in bombers and everything, people are just buying time to steal. And Nyakanga was still in office. She still approved some payments, even immediately after elections. Was she still under coercion immediately after elections? Had she not known that there was a regime change? Had she not known there is a president, there is a, a president elect immediately after elections? Like you still approved payments about within four weeks, four, two weeks uh, when the case was in the Supreme Court. So people were just playing games with us. And that is why you see the Honorable Raila Odinga complaining, left, right, and center. He's actually not defending Kenyans. Him, his interest is about trying to twist people's minds so that they can really not raise issues about the billions that have been lost.